In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the passenger side exhaust pipe with catalytic converter. It also contains the crossover pipe that goes over to the driver side on this Ford F-150 with a 5.4 liter engine. If you need this or any other part, check us out at oneauto.com. Let's get started. Underneath the truck, as you can see, the driver and passenger side pipes meet right here. We have to disconnect that. And just so you know, you're most likely going to need a new clamp for this area because this one is in really poor condition. Most likely I'm going to have to cut it off. And to remove the passenger side exhaust pipe because it crosses over and it has hangers, it's tied into everything here. It's a lot easier if we just disconnect the driver's side, pull it away. Unfortunately, that is extra work, but it's going to make this a lot easier. It's uh, connected back there, up at the top and over here and having more wiggle room in this whole piece here will make things, like I said, a lot easier. Let's get the O2 sensors disconnected. I'm gonna start with the driver's side downstream O2 sensor, follow the wire, and you'll see the connector all the way up there. It's that green connector, and to unplug it, if you just reach for the harness, there's gonna be a tab on the uh, front side of it. Squeeze that tab and pull the connector out might be a little stuck in here from sand buildup over time. There we go. Shake all that sand out of there. Let's get this resecured. There we go. All right. Now we can move on, follow it, and unclip it from this retainer. Free up the wire. And now let's remove it off of the pipe. To do this, you may need to apply some heat. We'll see if that's the case, hopefully not. But the reason I disconnected it first is so that once we break it free and it can spin, we can continue removing it without twisting up that wire so we can reuse the sensor. You can take this off with several different tools. I recommend one of these crow's foot oxygen sensor sockets. They are the best for gripping on and providing you with enough space to work. You can use a regular tubular oxygen sensor socket. You could even use a wrench. 22 millimeter is what fits here, but like I said, this is more likely to get a, a nice tight grip on it. Make sure that this sits perfectly on this O2 sensor. And now, let's try to break it free. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this socket off and you can either use an induction heater or a little torch I'm gonna use a little torch and I'm going to heat up the base of it where it threads into the pipe right here. I want to expand these threads. I don't want to damage the sensor. I'm going to apply heat right here. Hopefully that'll get it out. all the way out at this point. I don't like to soak these with rust penetrant because I don't want the rust penetrant to get down into the sensor part. So usually heat is your best bet when it comes to oxygen sensors. There it is. Drop this down. I'm gonna get my socket off of here and then we'll take the upstream out. If you follow the pipe up, you'll see the upstream O2 sensor. And if you follow it, Next to the green one that we disconnected earlier for the downstream, you'll see the black one, which is for the upstream. Pop this out of its retainer so you can hold it a little bit better. And the connector, the lock for the connector is actually on the back side of it over here. Press the tab, pop this out, and then just unhook the wire from all of its retainers. Just like that, and pull it out. With the wire set aside, Let's get our O2 sensor socket on the sensor and see what happens. Hopefully we don't have to use heat for this one. Make sure that's fully seated like that. <clears throat> Looks like we're gonna have to heat this one up as well. You we don't wanna force it too much. If it doesn't go and you feel that it's stripping out the cutout here, don't continue because then you're in for more trouble. Oh. 
Oh, never mind. I got it. Broke it free. Get your socket off. Remove the sensor. There you go. Now do the same to the passenger side. On the side of the transmission here, on the passenger side, you can disconnect the downstream, also green just like the other one. And if you look further, you'll see the upstream. Pull it down and unplug it. There we go. All right, now let's unbolt them. You can move this shield, kind of bend it out of the way a little bit if you have to. Because of this shield, I can't get a socket on here on this one. I'm going to try and get a wrench on this lower one. Not guaranteed that it's going to happen. If I can't break this free with a wrench, I'm going to just take the exhaust pipe down with the sensor and then take it off when the exhaust pipe is on the bench. The reason for this is this shield here won't allow me to get my oxygen sensor socket on. Oh, okay. Well, this doesn't always happen, especially since on the other side we have to use heat, but looks like it broke free, so that's a score. So in that case, I can remove it now. Like I said, if you can't, just leave it in. Take it off with the pipe. This is a 22 millimeter wrench, by the way. I know I twisted the wires a little bit, but it's not bad. I didn't rip them out or anything. There's the passenger side downstream. Set that aside separately so that you can put them back exactly where they came from. And let's get the passenger side upstream disconnected. All right, let's see if the wrench can get it. Okay, I think something good happened. There it is. Upstream passenger side removed. Now back to the driver's side, let's unbolt the pipe off of the manifold. You have one bolt, well, it's actually a nut. Should be a 15 millimeter. Uh, there's one on each side. Might not be a 15 millimeter anymore because it's rusty. And uh, I also recommend using heat for these if they don't come off easily. Rust penetrant can help but a lot of times with exhaust, heat is the way to go. Okay, that's 15 and it's way too loose, so let's go down to a 14. 14 seems to fit a little bit better. Might have to downsize even more to a 13, but we'll see. This one is in a lot worse condition, so I'm going to hammer a 13 millimeter on there. Let's try a half inch socket, which is just slightly smaller than a 13. Always a good idea to have new hardware when you do exhaust work. Oftentimes this is what you end up with. Carefully pry this down. Should separate. All right, it's not gonna come down very far though because it's obviously still bolted onto the rest of the pipe, but it does separate off the manifold. That's what we want. So let's move on and disconnect it from the crossover pipe. Over here, there is absolutely nothing left for me to salvage on this crossover pipe. So I'm just going to cut it and then uh, pry it, basically pry it open, remove it, and replace it. And now you're gonna wanna take a rubber mallet, tap this exhaust pipe that way to hopefully break it free out of here. Okay, I got it pretty much where it needs to be. Oh, there we go, that just popped out and it's falling off the manifold, that's perfect. You can remove the driver's side catalytic converter. 
these bolts right here I have to reuse. So I'm gonna try and save them by heating up the nut side. millimeter socket. Perfect. All right, let's do the same as the other one. Also a 13 millimeter. All right, there we go. It's hot. I'm gonna leave that like that move up to the manifold side and get that loose. Now for the manifold side on the passenger side, you can see the lower bolt is easily accessible here. Just like we did earlier, I'm gonna hammer on a socket. I'm going to try a 13 because this one seems pretty rusty. Yeah, that went on no problem. So hopefully that doesn't strip out. Let's heat it up and find out. This upper one is gonna be a little more difficult to see. You might be able to get to it better through the fender well. However, the problem here is gonna be the fact that you're gonna need a deep socket and a swivel and uh, you have no room. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attempt to obviously use a deep socket and a swivel. I'm gonna heat it up the best I can and uh, hopefully it breaks free. I'm going to try a 14 millimeter. I tried a 13 already off camera and it didn't seem to fit on very well. So maybe this one is in better condition. Now we have to unbolt the two rubber hangers off of the transmission mount so this pipe can come out. There's one of them. This is a 15 millimeter headed bolt. You're gonna need a swivel unless you wanna get it with a wrench. Okay, this comes off, this comes off, and now the hanger is ready to come out of there. The other hanger, if you look from the back side of it, from the rear of the vehicle, you can see the two 15 millimeter bolts right there. They go into the transmission. Break this one free also. Probably get him with the air ratchet now. Let's support the transmission slash transfer case if it's a four wheel drive model. And once we support it, we can unbolt the mount, drop this cross member and get our exhaust out. Right here at the bottom of the transfer case is where I'm going to apply some pressure. I'm using a wooden block between my pole jack and the casing of the transfer case because I don't want to crack it. You can use a rubber pad or anything else that you have. Just apply slight upwards pressure like that. Don't lift it off. It's actually not even going to come off because it's still bolted through the transmission mount onto this cross member. So next, let's take these two nuts off that hold this down on the cross member. To get these out, you'll need an 18 millimeter socket. A deep half inch version is most likely the only one that'll fit. Uh, deep 3 8 is going to be too short unless you have an extra long one because these studs are very long and they need to protrude into the socket. Having said that, remove both of these. Perfect. The transmission mount lifted up a little bit. That's exactly what we want. If we raise our support, as you can see, transmission and transfer case go up. So we're going to leave this right here. I just want a little bit of separation. And now on each side, you'll see an 18 millimeter mounting nut with a 15 millimeter headed bolt on the other side. Well, two of them on each side, so four in total. Let's remove all four of these. The bolt's a couple spins so you can break them free. A lot of times they're gonna be seized in there from rust buildup. Spraying them with rust penetrant will also help. I'm going to 
take one out. This one seems to want to come out. Set this one aside. I'm going to leave this one in though, because I want this cross member supported on this side while I unbolt the other side. And back to the other side. Let's take this last one out. All right, this exhaust shield has a 10 millimeter bolt that's bolted onto this cross member. Let's remove that so we can get the cross member down. The other side exhaust shield is actually bolted on the same exact way. You can just barely see that bolt in there. It's hard to see. I'm gonna take both out. Put a bolt back to support it here while I take off the other side shield. Get this bolt back out that I put in for, for safety and, okay. And there it is. I'm gonna put some support with a pole jack on this exhaust pipe so we can unbolt the last two bolts of the hanger because once we unbolt those, it will be ready to drop down and obviously I want to control that. So I'm gonna support it, put a little bit of pressure on it. Don't jam it into anything, don't crush it. And now let's take off the last two bolts for the transmission mount that are all the way up here. They are 15 millimeter in size to break them free and then Hopefully I can fit some sort of a ratchet in here or a ratcheting wrench. There we go. Oh. Move this engine mount around so you can unthread the bolt by hand if you don't move it. It's most likely going to put pressure on it and it won't spin very easily. There it is. Okay, so that's unbolted. As you can see, this is ready to come down. Let's lower the exhaust pipe. And there it is. And with the pipe off, we can now slide the transmission mount right off of the hangers. All right, to separate that, there's the exhaust pipe with the catalytic converter. Now we have to clean up the pipe that leads to the muffler. This area here is where the new pipe is going to sit and it doesn't have a gasket. It just has to sit flush on here. Now, yes, you can use uh, your own gasket or some gasket maker, but technically this should be a perfect surface where metal on metal squished together should make a seal. So I'm gonna give it the best chance it can have by cleaning this up with a wire wheel. If yours is in really poor condition, consider replacing the rest of the pipe. If you need to sand it down to make it flat because of rust, go ahead, just don't remove too much material. Now let's clean up the manifold surface where the manifold meets the pipe. It doesn't take a gasket here, so you have to make sure the surface is nice and clean. At 
this point, you may or may not have to clean up the threads on these mounting studs for the pipe to manifold bolts. As you can see, I did clean mine up just a little bit. They weren't damaged and not in need of replacement, but it is a good idea so that you don't accidentally cross thread it as this gets tight because they were kind of rusty coming off, which is why we had to use all that heat. You wanna make sure it clamps on perfectly. You don't wanna to have to come back here to fix things that uh, didn't go right the first time. This can also apply to the pipe that goes back to the muffler. Clean up the threads on the two mounting nuts that are welded onto this flange. And on the hardware, the two bolts that came out of here do have to be reused. So if they are in need of replacement, replace them. If they just need to be cleaned up, clean them up. Okay, we are now ready to install the new exhaust pipe. I have that pole jack ready to support it so that as I bring it up close, I can rest it on something. Here we go. Grab the pipe, slide it up towards the manifold. This area, as you can see, is a split two-piece setup, which is great because it allows us to slip that transmission mount on here, swing it up, bolt it, put the other piece in, and uh, it's gonna be a lot simpler. So at this point, I want to connect it either over here or up on the manifold. Doesn't matter which one you do first, as long as one of them is connected. That way, it's at least anchored in one spot. line up the, the top here on the manifold. There we go. And start the mounting nuts on. That's not gonna be easy. One is started. As soon as one is started, you know this exhaust can't go anywhere. Put the other mounting nut on. Not gonna tighten them. I just want it secured, like I said. I want it positioned where it's gonna sit. I do need it to move around still, so I need to line up the rest of it. This the tightening of those two mounting nuts is gonna happen at the very end when everything is uh, put together, basically. That way it can still move and join with the other pieces on both ends. All right, now let's join these two. As you can see, there's a pretty big gap here. I can stick my whole hand. There's no gasket that goes here, however, the muffler and this extension pipe here, as well as the tailpipe, are all on hangers that do come forward if needed. So if you just pull on it, there we go. That takes up that slack. Most likely it will get pushed back when you take the old exhaust off. And now, just like with the front, I don't wanna tighten this. I just wanna bring it together and position it. This still needs to pivot and spin so that we can line up the driver's side manifold. So as you pull this forward, Try to line these two up just like this. I have the bolts ready, so as soon as this does line up, I'm gonna stick in one bolt. Doesn't matter which one you do first. There we go. This one threads in smoothly, and I'm just gonna get it started here. Now, let's line up the other one. All right, there we go. And like I said, I'm not going to tighten these. I wanna leave them just like this, just so I can hold the two pipes together, close, but not, not tight. All right, this still moves around. That's perfect. Let's move on to getting this transmission mount back into place here. You can slide it over this hanger, and that's why this is more convenient, because well, you can do just this. Once you slide it over, you position it near the uh, transmission mounting area. Just push it onto the hanger. All right, I do have my bolts ready. However, before I put those on, I will put this piece on, which is an extension of this crossover pipe. I'm not going to clamp it. I'm not going to attach it in any other way, but I do want it on here because the other hanger is here and we have to make sure that it's properly positioned in relation to not just the pipe, but both of these hangers, which then have to go up on the transmission like this. And looks like this side lines up perfectly with the two bolt holes. So I'm going to start these 
that way at least it'll be held on. Now the pipe is still kind of drooping down so I have to push it up and overcome the weight of it. I might actually use some sort of a support here, my pole jack to push this whole thing up. Okay, right about there is where I want it. Try to get these bolts lined up. Yeah, that lines up perfectly. I'm going to get these two close now that they're in. All right, these are about as close as I want them for now. That way this can still move around so we can line up the other side. And here's the other side. They're pretty much lined up at this point. So I'm just going to use a long extension with a socket to slide these in here. Push up on the mount. This one starts in nice and smooth. Perfect. If it doesn't, make sure you're not cross-threading it because this is an aluminum housing that you're threading into and a steel bolt will cross-thread really fast. And there's the other one. I just started. All right, so at this point, because all four are in, let's just tighten them up. snugged up. I'm going to come back with a ratchet. Um, I can't unfortunately torque these because of their location, but I'll come back with a ratchet that has a swivel head on it and make sure that they are actually tight. Okay. I actually can torque this one, just not this one. So 66 foot-pounds is the torque for all four of these. Like I said, I'm only going to torque the ones that I can. The rest, I'm just going to tighten up with a wrench. If you don't have the ability to torque any of them, just make sure they're nice and tight. All right. Ah. All right, I'd say that's pretty tight right there. Back to the other side, let's tighten up these and torque those as well. Fortunately, I can torque these. 66 foot-pounds on these as well. And number two. I'm gonna remove this support here that was holding up the engine mount or the transmission mount. I know I still have this one. This is holding up the transfer case, which is actually pretty much time to put this cross member in. So uh, let's do that. Now let's get this cross member back in place. I sprayed some anti-seize on the ends here where it was a little rusty. You can clean it up if you want. Slide it up. I have my bolts ready. That way as soon as it goes up, let me see, make sure these go through. As soon as it goes up, I'm gonna slide a couple bolts through just to hold it in place. Use a rubber mallet to tap it in. I recommend against a steel hammer because you don't wanna bend the metal. A rubber mallet will be a little more gentle. Also, it is directional. It says front on the, uh, on the underside of it, so you can aim it towards the front of the vehicle. Oh. And you see this doing its job, I guess. The bolts went in back to front. Put them back the way they came out. I anti seized the bolts as well. All right, two of them are in. Let's get the other two in now. Right. Now let's lower the transmission onto this cross member. I know it's not bolted on. I want to lower this, put pressure on this mount, and then I'm going to use the jack, jack up this whole thing, and uh, basically raise up this cross member up against the frame with the transmission on it so that everything is seated as it will be when it's bolted on. All right, now with this centered up, make sure you have something in between here to not damage this surface. Put a little bit of pressure on it. This will raise the support up. Now both of these ends are up against the frame. Once these are tightened, we'll come back and tighten the mount. Now when you do this, make sure you don't crush it. You don't want to see it start bending because it will eventually start bending upwards. And uh, well, that's going to end up pulling on the frame. You don't want to do any of that. Just put a little bit of pressure. Let's put the mounting nuts on. Make sure they're starting on properly and not cross threading. And then we'll bottom these out. The torque for these is 85 foot-pounds. 18 millimeter socket on the nut, hold the bolt with a 15. And 
and park these. And here's the other side. Now let's lower our support so we can uh, put these mounting nuts back on. At this point we can remove it. Everything is held on in place with this cross member. And now let's get these two mounting nuts on. There we go. The torque for these is 76 foot-pounds, so let's bottom them out. Let's get the two exhaust shields re-secured once you get the bolt through, you can uh, start it down by hand, make sure it threads on smoothly. Grab a ratchet and a 10 millimeter socket and tighten this up. Make sure the shield is properly centered and positioned. You don't want to end up with any sort of rattles after you're done. Snug it up and let's do the other side. Nice and snug. Now let's get this other hanger resecured. I waited to do this until now so that everything else can be set in place and then we can clamp this down in its proper position. Get the bracket over with the other half of the hanger and let's clamp it down, get the bolt through. nice and snug. Now let's go back to the manifold side of this pipe and tighten it up. Because this flange needs to seat itself properly, I'm going to go back and forth. It looks like that top stud and nut have a couple less threads sticking out than the bottom. So I'm going to start with that one, get that tightened up a little more, and go back to the bottom one. And uh, like I said, even pressure is key here because you want that flange to seat and seal up properly. Otherwise, you'll have an exhaust leak, and uh, it being right at the manifold, that is actually a safety concern. You don't want that getting into the cab. So that's snugged up. Let's go back to the bottom. Tighten this one up. Well, that's getting pretty tight. That's a good sign, though. That means it's sealing up. It's bottoming out. Okay. Now I can't torque. Well, I could torque this one. I can't torque the top one because of the swivel. I'm going to do my best to make them all nice and tight. Okay. That should be pretty good. Definitely want to make sure they are tight because there's no gasket. You need to basically compress that metal and uh, allow it to seal up in there by the, just the pressure of the pipe. Let's go back to the pipe that leads backwards towards the muffler. Tighten this up, 13 millimeter for this one. And same thing, go back and forth. I'm going to get this one snug, go to this one, okay, that's tight, and I'm also pretty much running out of threads here. Perfect, that's tight. Looks to be sealed up. We'll check it afterwards when everything's back together. Make sure there are no exhaust leaks. Of course, if there are any, you'd want to take it apart, either clean some more, or you can use some gasket maker. They make special exhaust gasket maker. You can add that in there, and that should fix the problem. Like I said earlier, if it's severely corroded, pitted, and damaged, replace the pipe. To secure these two pipes right here, even though I'm not fully securing them yet, but I do want to get this ready, you'll need a two and three quarter inch clamp unless you want it to weld it, of course, but you can also use a clamp just like this. I'm just going to get this set up and ready and snugged up, but I'm not going to completely tighten it yet. I want the other side pipe in first before this gets completely squeezed shut because I want this to still be able to move around just a little bit to allow for some maneuvering of the pipes. When you position your clamp, I don't like to leave the clamp hanging down, well with the, with the studs hanging down, just because I don't want it to accidentally grab onto something. 
I know the differential and the cross member are, are lower, but still, you have this ground clearance here, you should be able to use it. Having said that, I'm going to angle it forward, even though I don't prefer doing this. I usually like to aim it backwards, but I don't have space here because of this cross member. So forward is my next best option. Just going to tighten this up just a little bit. Like I said, that's enough. This still moves around. I just wanted it positioned on here. Also, when you position this clamp, make sure it's halfway between the end of this pipe and the end of the flare over here. That way it crushes down. Basically, this is crushing down the pipe. You want it crushed down in the middle, squeezing on this pipe. So we'll come back to this in a few minutes. For now, let's get the other side catalytic converter pipe in. Now let's take the driver's side pipe, bring it up on the manifold, and slide it into this one. You can let it rest here at this point. Let's get the mounting nuts for the manifold side. At this point, you just want to move the pipe around until it fits. If for some reason it doesn't want to go over the manifold, pull down on the back side of it. This will give you a little extra slack. Once you get it to line up, the flange should basically automatically line up as well. So start the two mounting nuts and start the other one as well. And let's tighten these up. I'm going to go back and forth on these so they can seat properly. It's important that this flange sits evenly so that you don't get exhaust leaks. Exhaust leaks up here are not good and uh, a safety concern. So get these nice and snug. There we go. All right. The torque for these two is 30 foot pounds. And two. Now that we have the other side exhaust pipe in, let's tighten up this clamp. You should visually start to notice that it squeezes down on the exhaust pipe. That's the goal. That's pretty tight. I'm going to try and get them equal. Okay. Need a longer wrench to get some more leverage here. There we go. All right. That's pretty tight, I'd say. Now let's do the same thing over here. Put the clamp on, snug it up, and as long as it's tight enough to where you can see the pipe squeeze down, you know you're good to go. All right, that's nice and tight. Now let's get the downstream O2 sensor in on the passenger side catalytic converter. A little tight in here, but you can reach it. Also, a side note, you should put some uh, anti-seize on the threads of the sensor. This will allow it to come off a lot easier next time. Make sure it's actually starting in properly. All right, that just bottomed out. Let's grab the wrench. It's a 22 millimeter and make sure it's nice and tight. There we go. That's snugged up properly. Let's get the upstream O2 sensor in and then we'll plug them both in. This upstream one is also somewhat tight in here. I'm going to have to block your view for a second, just so I can start it in. There we go. All right. Get the O2 sensor socket on here. And make sure it's, it's nice and tight. There we go. Let's get the downstream O2 sensor plugged in. That was this, this green connector. Make sure it clicks and re-secure it up here on this retainer. And let's connect the upstream, which was the black connector. Okay, make sure that one that clicked for sure. All right. And re-secure it onto this retainer so it doesn't flop around. There we go. Now let's get the downstream O2 sensor in on the driver's side. Clean up the threads if necessary but definitely apply some anti-seize. There we go, that's bottomed out nicely. Let's grab a 22 millimeter wrench, or you can use the oxygen sensor socket, whatever you prefer. There we go, that's all I'm gonna do. Let's get the upstream in, and then we'll plug them both in. And the upstream, same thing, apply some anti-seize. 
make sure the wire doesn't get too twisted here. All right, let's get the O2 sensor socket over. On this one, it's a little more difficult to use the wrench. All right, make sure that's nice and tight. Oh, make sure the O2 sensor socket doesn't fall off. Okay, that's snug, perfect. Take this off of here, and now let's plug them both in. Green with green and black with black. Make sure the wires are routed where they were before. Make sure they click and secure them. That one was a very silent click, but it did click. Those are both plugged in. Now get in the truck, start it up. And listen for exhaust leaks, there shouldn't be any. If there are any, well, you should fix them. So there you have it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you can stay up to date with all of our latest content. Thanks for watching.